Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath. Bon Sabbath, l'église. Bon Sabbath. Vous voulez remercier Brother Dehaiti for inviting me here today, and I want to thank God for this opportunity. Whenever I'm invited to a church to come and preach, it's a big blessing, and I thank God for it. Um, like Brother Dehaiti said, three years ago I started um, preaching, I started a ministry. I didn't expect it to get this far. Um, <laughs> On commence à pousser pour trois ans qu'on y a. Un jour, on était en pasteur, pasteur a dit, si on était à pousser, alors sans pas des gens pousser, sans pas des gens qui j'en puis on était à pousser. Mais pasteur ça, il te gagne la foi en amour. Donc il te met dans, il te bon pousser. Depuis là ça, on continue à pousser jusqu'à qu'on y a. Amen. Amen. So moi je remercie bon Dieu pour pour ça et bon là. Pour, pour nous, les bonnes noms, pour connaissance, les bonnes noms, pour le Saint-Esprit maintenant dans la vie, moi, pour faire ça. So, today's sermon is called The Humility of Christ. Si nous avons commencé, je vais vous donner une petite histoire. Je um, travaille dans un shelter, pour que vous ne pas de calme. Je travaille dans un shelter, je travaille dans un shelter où les gens qui n'ont pas de maison vivent. I have a client. So I was speaking to this client and he told, and we were getting into a little dispute. We was going back and forth and he said, do you know how old I am? I'm pile fwa leo jen, pwa sa wwa pa sa kan gom moun, gom moun a toujou di, ou konne laj mwen, ou konne ki sa wwa ap di? Apo sa, le i di sa kon se de vi, um di, um di, um di, ki ki laj ou? I di, um 57 an, 57. So I was like, okay, and I'm 29. He said, okay, so you're 29. And then he said, do what a priest has been preaching for 40 years know the same thing about a Bible that a priest that just started preaching in his 20s know? I said, age does not measure the amount of Holy Spirit that is in a person. Amen. And he was like, what do you mean? I said, I'm 29. I became an elder at 29. There's people who became elder at 49, 59. And he said, you're 29, what word of God can you give anybody? <laughs> so I started laughing. He said, who is the one 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 My first year of preaching, I did two sermons for the whole year. For the first year, I did two sermons for the whole year. Um, I did three years ago. Um, we were in the mass of the I'm getting to push a cease for the job. Amen. 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 So, God is good. I, all the time. Mm -hmm. So, the first year I preached only two sermons for the year, and so far, we in May, I already preached six sermons. Amen. So, I played my sermon from last week to him, which was about Nicodemus and how Jesus was teaching Nicodemus that you have to be baptized in both water and in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So, after he finished. Watching the sermon, a tear came down his eye. I put the film, got the video up, my push it, come say clear. I'm saying, please, I want to clear. He said, because the sound so push it, he might get him one. He said, once you just preach and touch my heart, and he said, you know what? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna show you humility. I'm gonna humble myself and say that yes, you do know the word of God. Amen. Same thing as the sermon. The humility of Christ. It was through Christ's humility that he reached the level that he did. And I'll show you that today. Amen. Close your eyes and bow your head. <coughs> Dear Heavenly Father that dwells in heaven, we thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for this moment of time where we could be here amongst you, Lord. We thank you for blessing us with your spirit. We thank you for sending your only begotten son to die upon the cross for us. We thank you for all of the sacrifices that you have done. We thank you for being there and protecting us even when we were lost. We thank you for helping us to find the word and to find ourselves. Dear God, I ask you to forgive us for our sins, for they are many. We ask you to make us anew and to bathe us in the water so that um, our sins could be cleansed. Dear God, I ask you to help me to deliver the word to your people and help it to be received. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Okay, so um, generally when I use PowerPoint, I use black pictures of black people because, for obvious reasons, I'm black myself. Amen. <laughs> so, um, water and spirit. So like I said earlier, Jesus was talking to Nicodemus. Um, how do you say Nicodemus in Creole? Nicodem. Nicodem. 
So Jésus t'a parlé ça que Nicodème, il dit Nicodème, on est pour qu'à baptiser en le Saint Esprit, ça que globe. Il dit pour qu'à rentrer en est dans le ciel, on est pour qu'à faire encore. So il te dit on est pour qu'à faire encore. Il te quoi? Il te dit pour qu'à rentrer pas dans le ventre à maman. Il dit c'est pas ça ma explique au pour qu'à faire encore, on est pour qu'à baptiser en globe, ça que le Saint Esprit. Jesus was talking to Nicodemus and he said, in order for you to enter to the gates of heaven, you must be reborn. Amen. But Nicodemus took it literal in the sense that, well, maybe you just try to trick Jesus because that's what the Pharisees usually did. So he said that, what do you mean? I, and Jesus said, you have to be born again. He said, what do you mean? I'm a grown man. Should I go back into my mother's stomach and then be reborn as a grown man? Jesus said, no, you have to be reborn as in you have to be, big, you have to be baptized in both the Holy Spirit and in water. We know that Jesus had the Holy Spirit with him, right? Because if the Holy Spirit wasn't with him, he would not be able to do all the things that he did. And because he had the Holy Spirit with him, he was able to make the lame walk, make the sick heal, make the blind see, feed multitudes of people and all these other things. So these were proofs that God was with him. Pour bon Dieu, t'es qu'à faire tout bagay, t'es fait pour Jean, Jésus t'es et des monde Jean Jésus te fait mon ouais te fait mon il te avec ouais il te va mon manger il te fait mon il partait à marcher marcher camper he even brought someone back from the dead puis te fait tout ça bon Dieu te Jésus bon Dieu te gagne te casse que Jésus so tout le monde te voit ça so in John 3 verse 5 to 8 Jesus answered most assuredly I say to you unless one is born of water and of spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of God that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. So basically, Jesus is using nature to show Nicodemus the power of God. It's the same thing that God did with Job. Nous changer la Job, il est malade. Um, petit dit de de mourir ça quand t'as parlé parce que bon Dieu te bat ça quand pour 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 mission fait qu'à bail test basically Job was being afflicted because he was being tested because God gave the devil permission to afflict Job to test him and when Job questioned God God showed him nature God asked him does a bird question how it's gonna eat how does the sun come up in the sky it's not too close where it burns you but it's not too far where you freeze and then and then Jesus basic, and then God basically said to Job, if you can't explain the things in nature, how can you question me as God? It's the same thing that Jesus is saying to Nicodemus. You don't understand the things that are right in front of you on earth. How can you understand the things that are in the spiritual realm? So John 3, 9 through 17, and Nicodemus answered him, how can these things be? And Jesus answered to to him and said, Are you, aren't you the teacher of Israel and you do not know these things? Most assuredly I say to you, we speak what we know and testify what we have seen and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven but he who come down from heaven that is the son of man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up that whoever believed in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but, to through, but that the world through him may be saved. So here is Jesus basically telling the Nicodemus that he is the son of God, that he's the one that God has sent to save humanity. Même Jean, bon Dieu te voyait Jésus qui te a aidé l'homme, puis qui a sauvé l'homme. Bon Dieu te a voyait Jésus qui a crasé l'homme. A lot of times we don't understand that. Like, just like how before when God wanted to wanted to start over, basically, He chose Noah and Noah's kin, and He put them on a boat, and everybody else was destroyed. God could did the same exact thing, but instead He sent His only Son. Imagine your children, right? Your children's talking to someone else about God. And your child basically says that God has sent me to die for you. And you barely even know this person and you barely know God and you barely know anybody, but yet I'm here to die for you. Would you believe them? 
Si on monte quand fait beaucoup de temps, on te dit, moi là, je ne peux mourir pour eux-mêmes. Parce que Jean, Jean la vie où il est, Jean, tout le monde est devant, il n'est pas bien, so, pas pour envoyer moi-même là, je ne peux mourir pour eux. Si ça, on t'a dit, bah, mon ça, on t'a dit, mon ça, fou, ya, ouais. You will look at that person like they're crazy. But here's God, a love like no other. Because they said God so loved the earth. God so loved man, more than man loved himself. You have, they Amen. said that, Amen. they said basically love is wanting more for someone than they want for themselves. Sometimes you love somebody more than they love you. Yes or no? Yeah. With your children. Sometimes you, you do things for your children that your children don't even understand that you do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Jean nous a dit, dit pour yo, Jean, où est travail ou quoi? En plus, il y a un travail pour gagner l'argent, pour payer, pour payer les billes, pour yo, pour yo, pour yo, pour yo, pour You sacrifice a lot for your children. The same way God is looking at us, and God sacrifices his only son for us, and sometimes we let him down, and he still has love for us. Amen. A bond since birth. Jean-Baptiste a que Jésus te connaît l'un et l'autre en vain et de même fait. Jésus et Jean le Baptiste knew each other before they were even born. Would you believe that? Amen. Yes? Yes. No? Okay. In Luke chapter 1, 11 through 17, it basically talks about John's bloodline. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the side, on the right side of the altar in incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call him John, and you will always, and, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb, and he will turn many of the children of Israel to their Lord. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the father to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So John was born a couple months before Jesus. Jean de fait, quoi six mois avant Jésus de fait. Joba Jean de Pideka prepare Munio pour la Jésus vini. John's job was to prepare people for the coming of Christ. He basically did that by asking them to repent, to, to let go of their evil ways, and to basically baptize. John and Jesus was related in regards to they were cousins. Um, Jean sa que Jésus de cousin parce que maman Jean de Elizabeth, Elizabeth papa de Aaron, and John's father, his name was Zacharias. John's name was supposed to be Zacharias because there was no one in his lineage named John. But the angel came to John's mother and said to name him John, and that's how he got the name John. John's mother and father were both related to Aaron. On John's mother's side, Elizabeth, she had a cousin. Do you know what Elizabeth's cousin's name was? Mary. Mary, yeah, Jesus' mother. So. The same angel, même ange là, il était venu côté maman Jean, il était venu côté maman Jésus. Do you guys know what was the, the angel's name? Gabriel. Gabriel. So right after, at the time when Elizabeth was pregnant, she was old in age, she was barren, which means she couldn't have children. À l'âge à l'air, Elizabeth était beau avant, il partait qu'à faire ce monde. Pour ça, il était déjà grand monde. Il était un... It is a woman, 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 a woman. So the angel of the Lord said, Who is a woman? He said, Who is a woman? The angel said, No, it's Gabriel. It's a good day to see you can talk about it. Right after the angel went to speak to Mary and said, You will be with a child. At that time, Mary didn't have any husband. So she said, How can I be pregnant if I don't know a man? If I don't know a man? So you see what's going on here? You have two old people that's pregnant, then you have a virgin that's pregnant. <laughs> and, and the both of them are related. And everyone here is related. So it's like one big soap opera going on. And so what does Mary do? Mary's a virgin, and she's pregnant. So she runs to her cousin's house. Her cousin is Elizabeth, John's mother. 
So le mari a le kai a Elizabeth, bébé a un enfant à Elizabeth jumpé. The baby in Elizabeth's stomach jumps as soon as Mary walks through the door. Do you know why? Because Jesus is inside Mary and John is inside of Elizabeth. So the two kids, they know each other already. So when, so when Mary comes into the house with Jesus, John jumps in the womb while still in the stomach. So since before they were born, they knew of each other. Because they're cousins since birth, a bond since birth. So once John was finished doing his job, Jesus picked up. But in order for Jesus to pick up John's work, Jesus had to humble himself. You might ask how. So we're going to find that out. So John the Baptist, the prophet in the wilderness. That's found in Matthew 3, verse 1 through 6. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching the wisdom of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he who speaketh by the prophet Elias, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So since before John was born, the prophet Elias prophesied about the birth of John, saying that he would be the prophet in the wilderness. He wasn't... Basically, John was a preacher in the wilderness. He wore camel hair as clothes with an old belt. He ate grasshoppers, locusts, and he lived in the wilderness. Now, John himself was clothed in camel hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. Then Jerusalem, all Judea, and all the regions around Jordan went out to him and was baptized by him in Jordan, confessing their sins. So, c'est même Jean qu'on y a là où baptisé. Avant où baptisé, où réfléchir, à quoi? Before you baptize, you repent. You repent for your sins. You say, the life that I lived before, I'm not going to live again. Où dit la vie à... Because what's the word of God if you can't share with other people? So here's John. John is doing the work. He's in the wilderness. He's preaching. He's risking his life because John ultimately dies, right? He gets his head cut off. So John is here risking his life to try to save other people. But John is saying... Regardless of how great you think I am, there will be someone greater to come after me that I can't even carry his sandals. And at that time, So Matthew 3, verse 7 through 12, water, fire, and the Holy Spirit. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to him to his baptism, he said to them, Bore a viper who warned you of, to flee from the wrath to come. Therefore bear fruit worth of repentance. And do not think to say to yourselves, you, are, you have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to rise up the children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of all the trees. Therefore, each tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So Jean a parlé ça que tout chef l'église yo. Il a dit oui ou a dit ou chef l'église oui ou a dit c'est petit bon Dieu nous hier, mais nous pas faire job là. Your your tree is not bearing fruit, and whatever tree does not bear fruit will be used as firewood. Si ou a poussé si ou si ou a dit ou devant l'église, pour l'église a pas grandi, ou ne pas baptisé, l'église a fini, pipiti, pipiti, pipiti. Bon diable, tu vois, en la position à la, la mettre en moune, il a fait job là, puis bon passé ou même, puis il a fait job là. Amen. So basically, John is saying that these leaders are fake leaders. They're fake prophets, they're fake leaders, and they're not bearing fruit. They're not doing the job correctly. 
I guess you can talk about it now, right? Sure. Mais moi-même, je suis en pile position dans l'église, dans la conférence, et c'est là. Parce que si je n'ai pas fait le job, là, qui ça, toute position, c'est à la tête, je ne peux pas avoir rien parce que je n'ai pas fait le job. Là. Mais tu as une vraie position, et tu as dit oui, c'est ça, mien, c'est ça, mien, c'est ça, mien. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winning fan is in his hand, and he will therefore clean out his thrashing floors and gather his wheat into the barn, and he will burn up the chief with unquenchable fire. If no one knows what chief is C-H-A-F-F, that's when you eat the corn and the skin that you take off. And what do you do with the skin when you rip it off the corn? You throw it away, right? So God is basically, John is basically saying that when Jesus comes, all of that extra chief, all of that extra skin, all of that extraness that's not needed, that's not bearing any fruit, that has no youth, it will be thrown into the fire. This person that's coming is going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire. So what does that mean? We know Jesus was born through, through a divine birth, right? To a virgin. He came with the Holy Spirit. But even Jesus realized that in order for him to be whole, he, must have been, he had to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and in water. <clears throat> Jesus could have said, I'm Jesus, I'm son of God. I don't need to be baptized by John the Baptist. Jésus t'a dit, puis vous passez tout l'homme là. C'est moi cette petite bonne Dieu. C'est moi qui est sorti en dans le ciel. On vient là pour qu'à prêcher par l'homme. On pas besoin de faire un rien. On t'a campé là. On t'a gagné un rôle d'église. On t'a fait non n'a pas ça en vrai. Bon Jésus dit non. Ma ma chère, ma paix ça que mon là y a aucun moni blessé là, y a aucun moni malade là, y a aucun moni besoin de cela ma pierre. Ma place pour qu'à aider mon. So congratulations. I say congratulations because to me, I saw it as Jesus was getting, it was like a graduation. Now I'll read it to you. Matthew 3, verse 13 to 17. And Jesus came from Galilee to John at the river Jordan to be baptized by him. And John tried to prevent him saying, I need to be baptized by you. You are coming to me. So Jean a dit, vous-même, vous pouvez vous passer moi-même, c'est vous-même qui pouvez vous baptiser moi-même, mais vous ne pouvez pas baptiser vous-même. Jesus said, Jean is saying that to Jesus, you're a bigger person than I am. How can I baptize you? Mm. It's almost like someone is in a higher position than you, and they come to you, and they're asking you for authority. You're saying, you got more authority than me. How can I give you permission? Mm. But Jesus answered and said to him, Permit it to be so, for thus is fitting for us to fulfill righteousness. Then he shall allow, then he allowed him. So Jesus said, Who is going to be baptized? Because if you are not baptized, the job is not going to be able to do it, and you are not going to be baptized. Jesus understood his role. Jesus understood that he had to humble himself, even though he felt like, even though Jesus knew that he was the Son of God, and he came straight from heaven. He knew that he had to humble himself in that position in order for John to baptize him so he could receive the glory of heaven and for his father himself to come and bless him. So let's see what happens right after. And then he had been baptized. Jesus came up a million from the water and behold, the heaven opened up to him and he saw the Holy Spirit of God descending like a dove, aligning upon him and suddenly a voice came from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So, Congratulations. This is almost like a graduation for Jesus, right? Because his father came. And if any of you guys are fathers, whenever your children do something, especially fathers and their sons, whenever your son do something, especially if it's your only son, you stand like a proud father and you're happy for your son. So here at Jesus' baptism, God showed up. God showed up. The Holy Spirit showed up. So right there, the Trinity lines up. The Son, the Father, and the Holy Ghost, all at one place. If Jesus was not to humble himself, this would not happen. But Jesus had to humble himself in order for him to reach the pinnacle of his power. 
because it said that a dove came down and the Holy Spirit came down. And we know even after death, Jesus was able to use the Holy Spirit to talk to the disciples and give them jobs to do and tell them what to do in regards to preaching the gospel after his death. So the Holy Spirit was with Jesus during his life and even after his death. Même là après Jésus de mourir, le Saint-Esprit est toujours ça que c'est ça que le Saint-Esprit est utilisé pour te parler ça que disciple. Le bon le Jésus de baptisé, bon Dieu sorti en dans le ciel, il vient en bas puis te après ça il dit ça c'est petit, ça c'est petit, bon Dieu. Le Saint-Esprit est venu, le Saint-Esprit est venu, il m'a dit Jésus, il dit oui, ça c'est Jésus, petit à bon Dieu. Amen. Si bon Dieu te si Jésus te senti te trop voir tout tout ça été passé par ta jambe passé. Amen. Parce que Jésus te a dit oh mais Jean 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 nous mettez vira sur lui, il mange le bête, il trappe à terre, Amen. il était d'ailleurs qui Jean l'a fait pour baptiser moi-même. But Jesus humbled himself. <coughs> the best man. So in John 3, and they came to John and said to him, Rabbi, he who is with you beyond the Jordan to whom you have testified before, he is he is baptizing and all is coming to him. So because these people are basically trying to start trouble. They're, they're saying, John, you're the person who should baptize people. Now there's this new guy named Jesus. He's baptizing people. How do you feel about this, Rabbi? And John answered and said, A man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from heaven. You yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but I have said before him, He who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, the joy is mine fulfilled. He said, Jean a parlé, c'est parce que Jésus était marié. Il dit, l'homme marié, mon nom est campé à bon côté, n'est-ce pas qu'il est marié, c'est pas lui-même qui est marié, mais il est content pour mon nom qui est marié. He said that the bridegroom, the groom, is not the person, is the person that's getting married, but the person next to him is not the person that's getting married, but they could be happy for the bridegroom. Same thing why I use this picture. Next to me is my best man. That's when we were getting, that's when I was getting married to my wife. Amen. 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 So the reason why I use that picture is at my wedding, my best man, he was crying. He was sitting in the front row. He was crying. His face turned red. And I looked, I saw him cry. I'm like, why you cry? He said, I'm so happy for you. He wasn't getting married, but he was so happy for me that he was Amen. crying. Same Amen. thing with John. John was there when Jesus received the Holy Spirit. Jean de la le set at the speed de moyen Jésus. Jean y pate jaloux. Il te dit, il te fait un vent, tu as fait job là en vent, tu as prêché en vent, tu as baptisé mon en vent, mais il te content pour Jésus. Pour ça, l'autre monde est venu pour te raconter comme c'est un scandale, il dit, oh, tu es là en vent, Jean, tu as fait le même job, tu as fait le même job, tu as fait Jean, Jean, Jean dit, on n'a pas qu'à faire le job à bon Dieu sans Jésus, sans bon Dieu, pas ça que yo. C'est le Saint-Esprit que le ciel y baille. Job Sapika Fesso Lapi Fed Jobla. John answered by saying that no man can do the work of God without permission from heaven. And if you see Jesus doing this work, it's because heaven has given permission to do so. Amen. Amen. He who come from above is above all. He who he who is on earth is earthly and speak of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. And what he has seen and heard that he testifies, and no one receives his testimony. He who receives the testimony has certified that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaks the word of God. For God does not give the spirit by measure. The father loves the son and has given all things in his hand. He who believes in the son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe in the son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abides on him. So John is basically saying that God has blessed Jesus. God has not only blessed Jesus to a certain extent, God has blessed Jesus to the fullest extent. Amen. Where Amen. 
Jesus was able to heal the sick. He was able to walk on water. He was able to feed thousands. Mm -hmm. He could not even be defeated in death because when God said he's going to bless Jesus, he blessed him fully. And because he's the son of God, God was with him the entire time. And John is explaining this to the people because the people are telling John, John, you was here first, but John is saying that <clears throat> my job was only to create the path. Jesus was going to come after and do the work. It's basically John was saying that I just came to clean up. I just came to sweep, but Jesus was coming to lay down the foundation. Jesus was coming to lay down the foundation that everyone was going to follow. From that time up until now, Jean de Combe said job lap, but Jésus était fini, puis il a fini job lap. Amen. Même aujourd'hui, il y a nos doutes en anglais aujourd'hui, parce que job lap, Jésus était fait. We're all here today because of the job that Jesus did. Amen. Yes, John laid the foundation, but Jesus did the groundwork. Jesus had God with him the entire time. Every morning when Jesus woke up, he prayed to God to order his steps. And I tell young people this all the time. Pray to God because Jesus did it. And if you call yourself a Christian, then that means you're a follower of Christ. So if you're a follower of Christ, you got to follow the things that Christ did. Amen. And it's not easy because right after Jesus baptized, what happened? The devil started to afflict him and tempt him. Just like how you guys, the more you guys choose to do in church as youth, the more you, you attempt to move up in church, the devil's going to come and attack you. The devil's going to make your heart, it's going to make your life harder. But you got to stay with God because it's not easy. Even me right now, I'm standing before you preaching, right? The first time I baptized, I was a kid. I was maybe 16 or 15. I baptized in water, but I didn't baptize in spirit. I didn't understand God at that time. I was a young man. I didn't understand God. And when I became older, I started to explore the world, and I got caught up in the things that people got to get caught up in. I was more so about the flesh. And what does the Bible say about the flesh? The flesh will be of the flesh, the spirit will be of the spirit. So if I was of the flesh, I couldn't be of the spirit until I was to deny myself and pick up the cross and start becoming of the spirit. Amen. Amen. So the Amen. second time I baptized was with my wife. Me and my wife baptized together. Amen. I could have said, why am I baptizing again? I'm already chaplain for the Franco Haitian Youth Federation. I'm already um, an ordained deacon at the time. I'm already a youth leader. But at the time, God was showing me that, yes, you all these things, but now you're about to lead your family. Because right, before, because right after we baptized together, a few, a few months later, we got married together. So God was preparing me. And then I, I, I was married, Amen. I was a father, I was a man of God. Eventually I became elder. And the responsibility just began to grow. People is not fed, people is not fed, people are not fed. So, we can push a tika, we can push a tita, we can push a pill. We can say, if you want to push a tika, we can say, but let's say, we can 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 say, the other day I only reached one person. That person could tell someone else, that could tell someone else, that could tell someone else. We're not here to say that the job is easy. Job sasifan, job facil. And that's to the youth. This job is not easy. It's not easy to be a Christian in 2018. It's not easy to go to church every week. And we see every week or every month or every year less and less people come to church. And there's so much other things in the world that people find to be more cool than church. But we need to understand that God's been there since day one and God's going to be here forever. Amen. Everything else is temporary. Amen. Like cars come and go, clothes come and go, sometimes other things come and go. But God's always going to be there with you. Even when you turn your back on God, God's going to be there waiting for you. And to receive God, you have to be humble. Because even Jesus humbled himself in order to fully receive the Spirit. And if we call ourselves Christians and we're following the teachings of Christ and the life of Christ, we have to follow what Christ did. And that's to humble ourselves in order for God to fully work with us and for us to really fully receive the glory and for us to fully do the work. And that's the message I have for you guys today. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.